guys, Andrew here with Dadverb. So lately on the channel, we've been chatting a lot about the Nanit Baby monitor, but I think it's time we shift gears just a little bit, put the spotlight on a different monitor. So today we're gonna be chatting about Cubo AI Plus. Out the gate, I have to say from a picture quality standpoint, this is probably the sharpest of any of the baby monitors uh, that's currently out there. It's, it's, it's actually really impressive. But before we get into that, let's dial it back and let's talk about uh, what comes out of the box. When we open this guy up, we're looking at the camera itself with its unique bird design and uh, that wood accent. Uh, the floor base, inside of which is the crib attachments and a water bag. All of the components for the stand, cables and plugs, and then the mobile stand. Also in there is a Velcro stabilizing strap. And lastly, this little nugget, that's a, that's a temperature and humidity sensor, which uh, replaces the dangling tail from the previous generation. So even though this is a baby monitor that's in that premium price range around 299, they are delivering a little bit more value compared to some of the other options out there. And the main way that they're doing that is by providing you multiple mounting options. It comes with three choices for you to run with. The mobile stand allows you to set it on uh, dressers and tabletops. The, the crib mount gives you direct attachment to your crib slats. And lastly is gonna be the floor mount. In my last review of the original model, I gave the stand a little bit of heat because I felt like you could knock it off kilter fairly easily and I felt like it could have been stronger. But with the new model, it seems like they've added a little bit more heft. They thickened it up a little bit. It came with a small Velcro strap to tie it to the crib slot. So that in combination with the new thicker design, it's giving it a lot more stability compared to the previous generation. So that's a, that's a good improvement right there. They carried over the same concept of weighing down the base with a water bag. It's an improved water bag that doesn't leak so much anymore. I am considering filling the bag with like sand instead of water just to see how that goes. Haven't tried it yet. Don't take that suggestion to heart, but something I'm considering. It really is great that Cubo is including all those stand options for you, adding a little bit more value. You're not seeing that too much out of other brands. Uh, but uh, coming soon, though, is a wall mount version of their stand that's going to be available for $199. So you can swing by their website. It's just going to offer a cleaner look in the nursery if that's what you're into. By the way, you can use the code CUBOVERB to get 10 bucks off of your order in case you're interested. It's not a ton, but <laughs> it's something. Um, also, you can usually catch promos um, of, of the monitor. You'll find it for like $249, maybe less or something like that. So keep your eyes peeled. Might help if you're like on their email list or something. So let's circle back to the image quality. The camera is powered by a Sony sensor, which is delivering 1080p picture. And honestly, among baby monitors out there, this really does have the best picture that I've tested um, for both night vision and daytime. It's, it's great. Now, one thing I hear parents grumble about is like the red infrared lights that most cameras use for night vision. Uh, some complain that uh, the red lights are distracting or scary uh, for the baby, but with Cubo, they've actually done away with that. You don't have to worry about it. Um, every onboard light on the camera can actually be turned on or off through the app. And on that note, let's actually go through some of those features, a lot of which have carried over from the previous generation. I already reviewed that, so I won't get too into it, but let's dive in. There is face cover and rollover detection, which is particularly good uh, in the early months. Uh, but in the later months, I would say that if you, you know, if you have like something like a stomach sleeper, it's not something that you really need to keep activated. Uh, but please remember though, it is recommended that you have nothing in the crib with the baby for the first 12 months of life. Uh, our son is two now, so if you are seeing things in that crib, that's why, please don't flame me in the comments. You have danger zone detection, which is particularly useful in the toddler stage, or if they're like showing signs that they're trying to climb out the crib, it's, it's always nice to be proactive there. There are cry detection alerts, which you can set the sensitivity for. There's also two-way talk, again, something that we use occasionally after the infant stage, more for toddlers. We've got a built-in nightlight controlled through the app. Also, you can scroll through the time code to a particular event tag, which is pretty neat to be able to go back and uh, see certain moments with such precision rather than having like high-speed summaries like Nanit. It takes a moment to load sometimes, but really a great feature. We've also got background audio monitoring, which is a feature that I value. I like hearing for the baby even when my phone is asleep. But there's something about Cubo's execution of this feature that I really like. With this monitor, it tends to filter out the static noise really nicely and functions kind of similar to the ANR technology of the Infant Optics DXR8 Pro, which I've previously reviewed. Uh, with Nanit, uh, you can hear a lot of that static room tone and, and static noise, whereas Cubo, it filters it out. It's great.
Now, the biggest addition of the Plus has been the introduction of their sleep analytics. Now, looking back at sleep data can be really helpful for parents who want to know, you know, when their babies fell asleep, uh, when they woke up in the middle of the night, how, how frequent they're crying. Uh, you can have an actual visual on sleep progress or, or even regression, which is pretty helpful when trying to build routine. It does take two hours though to populate the data after waking, so I wish that was a little bit faster. For the first year, they give you free access to their premium features, which includes up to 30 days of analytics and memories, uh, as well as playback video downloads. After, it'll run you about like eight bucks a month. Without premium though, you still have access to the data, you just can't go back as far. Another feature with the Plus is gonna be the smart home integration with Google and Amazon devices. It's a bit buggy, doesn't always work. For our style, you know, it's not something that we use too often. It is cool, but we tend to just stick with our phones in the app. But I do get how some parents would get some good value out of it if they plan on, on longer periods of video viewing. In addition to the upgraded stand and lens, they've actually stepped up the speakers as well for onboard uh, lullabies and sounds. Now, it's important to note that when this feature is activated, they actually pause cry alerts, so you're not gonna have those, but uh, the good thing is that you do still have the background audio monitoring enabled, so you can still hear if the baby's crying. Lullabies and white noise are becoming a lot more common with uh, smart baby monitor options as they try to offer kind of all-in-one solutions for parents. Uh, but for me, it's not something that I find mega valuable for sounds uh, and noises. We tend to just use something like a hatch rest. It, it just delivers a little bit more for us. Now for these types of monitors, the camera can be great, but the system is only as good as the app. If the app is trash, then you're probably not gonna get the best experience. But generally speaking, I would say that my experience with the Cubo AI app has been pretty, pretty good. I would just nitpick at like maybe two things. First, when I'm in the full screen view of the feed, uh, I wish I could just like zoom out or swipe out of the camera view. I, I don't really like having to tap and then tap again just to get out of it. Second, I feel like the space under the feed can uh, offer a little bit more. Right now we're seeing like the lullaby functions uh, while some of the other things are a little bit more buried. I think putting a couple things up front would be just a little bit more helpful. Things like the nightlight control, uh, the push and talk function, Right now, under the video stream is a feed of the baby's activity uh, that was automatically captured. It's a really cool function, and I'm okay that it's there, um, I, but I think bringing forward some of that other functionality that I just mentioned uh, to the main screen, I think it should be considered uh, and prioritized with placement above the fold. I'm sure that some parents would actually like disagree with me on some of the opinions of the app, but that's just what they are, their opinions. Uh, but what is a fact though, is that Cubo has definitely made a good leap forward with the Plus, and as of now, I would consider it to be one of the top baby monitor options to pick up. I mean, I've talked about some of my favorite options in the past for sure, but if this is something that you ran with, I, I definitely think that you probably end up a pretty happy parent. That's all I've got for you guys. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button down there. It looks like a thumbs up. For more videos and reviews for new parents, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching this video. Come back for the next one. God bless, later.